you know, those who work in science probably understand your trajectory, but there are those who are watching who would think, if I made that money, I'd sit on a beach, I'd drink beer, and I would just watch the sunset, kind of like a Corona beer commercial. Have you ever thought about that as a career option? Uh, you know, I find that really pretty boring, so <laughs> that would be torture. If I had to do that every day, that would really be pretty awful for me. Not only did you, well, you rose, pay PayPal came up to 1.5 billion, you got out of that. Not only did you invest again, but you invest again twice. Not only that, but you chose probably two of the most risky capital intensive industries to go with. Rocket technology, which is basically a bomb, <laughs> right. directed up, yeah. and then cars, yes. which are, you know, we know what's happening in Detroit. Yeah. Um, so what is it that, that motivates there to do that, to go through the yeah. crucible again, two times again? It, it's much less fun than it, than it may appear. I mean, I mean, the case of, what I thought of, I would do was start and run SpaceX, then, and, and then create an electric car company with, with a few other people, work just, but just like apply 20% of my time and, and work on the product design. Um, because I'm like, my main thing is, in, is engineering and design. So, uh, that, yeah, that was um, an illusion. Uh, so, but I, I, I don't really have any choice but to, to, to apply a ton of time to Tesla or the company would be, you know, definitely dead, so. But the other way to do it, you could have stayed in Silicon Valley, started another few internet companies, made a oh, yeah. billion dollars, and then you could have bought Chrysler and probably bought NASA too, and you wouldn't have to start from scratch. <laughs> it's not, the point is not to sort of own a car company, but rather to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. You know, honestly, I, I don't think everyone needs to go, you know, try to solve like some big, big world-changing problem. I, I mean, I think that, I, I really think like, we should just think like, are we doing something that's useful? Mm -hmm. um, to the world, like, if, if you're doing something useful, that's great. Like, your sort of a usefulness optimization mm -hmm. is, is like, that's like a really good thing. Um, you know, if, you're, if you've done something that's useful to your fellow human beings, that's, you've done a really good thing. Um, and uh, people should feel pretty, pretty proud of doing that. Is there something about startup businesses that, that, that really fuels your desire to work? I, 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 I really need to be preoccupied with something. Uh, and I, if if I'm just sort of sitting there relaxing, I can only do that for a very short period of time, and then it becomes unbearable. If, if you want to do something really innovative, you have to apply a sort of first principles analysis, not not and don't don't reason by analogy. Analogies are, are, are referencing the past. Um, it, it, so you, first principles means you, you you look at the most fundamental truths in, in a particular arena, uh, um, and and the things that really are almost indisputably correct. Um, and you reason up from there to a conclusion. Um, and and if, you, if you see that that conclusion is at, is at odds with, with what people generally believe, then you have an opportunity. Mm. Um, now, you can't operate like that on all things because it takes too much mental horsepower. So most of your life you have to operate by reasoning by analogy. But if you really want to innovate, you must reason from first principles to identify the problem. Our, our, our target actually is so we've got a pet snail called Gary. Um, this is from Gary the snail from SpongeBob SquarePants. So, so Gary uh, is, is capable uh, of, of currently, he's capable of going 14 times faster than, than, than a tunnel boring machine. You, you so want to beat Gary? We want to beat Gary. He's, he's not a patient little fellow, and we want the, to, that will be victory. Victory is beating the snail. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people imagining, dreaming about future cities, they imagine that the, actually the solution is, is um, sort of flying cars, drones, etc. You, you, you go above ground. Um, why isn't that a better solution? You save all that tunneling cost. Right. I, I'm in favor of flying things. Obviously, I do rockets. So I, I like things that fly. This is not some inherent bias against flying things. But th th there is a challenge with flying cars in that they, they'll be quite noisy, uh, the, the wind force generated will be very high. Let's just say that if something's flying over your head, if, if there are a whole bunch of flying cars going all over the place, um, that is not an, exi an, an anxiety-reducing uh, <laughs> situation. Well, I mean, if you think about a company, a company is, is a group of people that are organized to create a product or service. 
that's uh, that's what a company is. So in order to um, create such a thing, you have to convince others to join you in, in your effort, um, and 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 so they have to be convinced that 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 it's a sensible thing, that uh, it's like that there's at least some some good some reasonable chance of success, uh, and if if there is success, that the reward will be commensurate with the effort involved, um, and uh, you know. So, so I think that's getting people to to believe in what you're doing uh, and in in you is, is is important. So, in in the beginning, there will be there will be a few people who who do, who believe in you or in, in what you're doing, um, and uh, but then over time, as you make progress, the the evidence will build and, and more and more people will believe in, in what you're doing. We are, all of us, already our cyborgs. So you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your, your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superhuman. But by far, you have more, more power, more capability than the President of the United States had you know, 30 years ago. Um, if you have an internet link, uh, you, you have an oracle of wisdom, you can communicate to millions of people, you can communicate to the rest of the earth instantly. Um, I mean, these are magical powers uh, that didn't exist not that long ago. So everyone is already superhuman uh, and a cyborg. Um, the limitation is one of bandwidth. So we're, we're bandwidth constrained, particularly on output. Uh, so uh, our input is much better, but our output is extremely slow. The point of a company is to create useful products and services. You know, a company is not, should not exist in and of itself. It exists, it's, it's, it's a group of people gathered together to make uh, products and services. And if those products and services are great, it's a valuable and useful company. And if they're not, it's, it's not. And so really to understand a company, you must use its products. And if you think the products are great, then it's, well, the company's great. That's it, that, that, that's how it is. I, I think sometimes people fret a bit too much about uh, short-term things, that w which are clearly just, um, you know, just bumps in the road type of thing, uh, where there might be a supplier shortage or, a, you know, some shutdown in some part of the world. Um, but but r really those things are, you know, are, are clearly just kind of one-off items and don't really matter for the long term. So, you know, so, so I guess sometimes people fret a little bit too much about this quarter or that quarter. But, um, you know, if you're a shareholder, a company is really like the net present value of future cash flows. And so what is a, you know, a, a one quarter is not really a big deal. Um, I, I think if you see people panicking, then instead of saying, oh man, my stock's gone down, there's a buying opportunity. I think it's a good idea when creating a company to to create it, to have a demonstration, or you know, to, if, if it's a product, to have like a a, a good mock-up, or if it's, even if it's, if it's software, to have good demoware, or to be able to sketch something so people can really envision what it's about. Um, like that, that's a, try to get to that point as soon as possible, and then iterate to, to make it as as real as possible, as fast as possible. Could we expend so much energy running around on the surface of the planet? that um, we don't have enough to eventually get off it to another planet if we wanted to? And if so, how long might we have to that point? Uh, yeah, I actually think um, as long as the sun is shining, we'll be fine. Um, <laughs> if humanity had to get all of its energy from, from the sun, it could, it could do so. Um, it, it, it's really this a, a truly astounding amount of energy that, that comes at us from, from the sun. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting that um, uh, if you took the land area of used by by um, by nuclear plants, including the, the stay out zones and everything, um, and said, okay, what generates more power, the nuclear power plant, or or just covering it with solar panels? In most cases. It's solar panels. Just the area used by the nuclear power plant in solar panels would generate more energy because you actually have to have a big stay out zone. You can't, you can't just put you know, a nuclear power plant in the, in, in, out in the suburbs and, and with a bunch of people around it. So you have to have this big clear, clear zone. And so they use a lot of area and um, 
But just to give you just a sense of how much power can come from the sun, um, this is literally true, what, what, what I've just said.